fedora, fedora, fedora. Sometimes I absolutely hate the things you do. Other times, I don't know why everyone isn't copying you. And this is one of those latter times. So a very simple change has been proposed for the next Fedora release, Fedora 39. Increase vm.max map count value. This is a single line config change that I've done on my system and has saved me from a giant headache and a bunch of other people have made the exact same change. And I'm very happy that other distros are starting to include this. The goal is to improve compatibility with Windows games through Wine or Steam. I think what they mean is Proton, but the idea is there. Steam Deck is shipping with a default of 2,147,483,642. This is the max 32-bit integer, minus 5. Note from Editing Brody, that is the highest number in a signed 32-bit integer, not an unsigned 32-bit integer. The unsigned is double the range. There is a good reason why it's minus 5, and we'll get to that in just a bit. This is raising it from the current 65,530 of Fedora. This isn't just of Fedora, this is actually the default kernel value. It makes sense to follow their lead and set the same value. Okay, Valve set a different value, but what even is this and what does it do? Well, in this context, VM doesn't mean virtual machine, instead it means virtual memory. Now this is going to be a very simplified memory explanation, so don't get on my case about it. On Linux, we have two kinds of memory. We have our physical memory, this is the RAM installed into our system. We also have our swap space. This might be a swap file, it might be a swap petition, doesn't really matter. If you add these two together, now you have your total virtual memory. In the very common cases of not caring where your memory comes from, this can be incredibly convenient for application development. All you say is, give me memory, and I don't care where it comes from. Then the kernel does all of the difficult stuff and just gives you the memory. But on the kernel side, you can't just have virtual memory. Those memory blocks need to be allocated into places that actually exist. This is done by taking the virtual memory and then mapping those blocks into places in your physical memory and your swap space. Now this might give you an idea about what max map count does. As described in the kernel documentation, this file contains the maximum number of memory map areas a process may have. Memory map areas are used as a side effect of calling malloc. Malloc is a way to allocate memory in C directly by mmap, mprotect, and madvise. These are ways for working with those maps more directly and also when loading shared libraries. While most applications need less than a thousand maps, certain programs, particularly malloc debuggers, may consume lots of them, e.g. up to one or two maps per allocation, with the default value being 65,536. This value is hard-coded at compile time, there's no build option to change it. The only way to change it is at runtime with tools like sysctl. Now you're probably wondering about side effects. Does this make your system more unstable? Does it make applications use more memory? Does it pre-allocate memory or anything like that? Well luckily, all of this has been well explained over in SUSE support and also the Red Hat docs. Over on SUSE, are there any side effects due to significantly increasing the vm.max map count? Increasing this parameter will potentially increase memory consumption by an application and thereby reduce performance of the server. This is in a server context. However, this is entirely dependent upon an application allocating a large amount of memory maps. If it was already going to use a lot of memory, increasing your max map count isn't going to increase that memory usage. It's just going to let it make more maps if it needs to make more maps. Does the kernel pre-allocate memory according to this setting? No, the memory is allocated only when a process actually needs the memory areas. And the same sentiment is said over in the Red Hat docs. Lowering the value can lead to problematic application behavior because the system will return 
out of memory errors when a process reaches the limit. The upside of lowering this limit is that it can free up low mem for other kernel uses. But if the application is crashing, it doesn't exactly matter because you can't do what you need to be doing. Raising the limit may increase the memory consumption on the server, but there is no immediate consumption of the memory, as this will be used only when the software requests it but it can allow a larger application footprint on the server. So if an application needs more memory maps, it can actually use them, but if they're not there, then the application is probably going to behave weirdly. Maybe that'll be out of memory errors. Maybe it'll be a much bigger problem. Now, with well-designed normal software, you shouldn't have any issue with the normal value. The problem is many video games are not normal, well-designed software. Sometimes they do absolutely ridiculous things that are just totally normal on Windows, but don't work properly if you run the application through Wine. For example, one of the listed games is Daisy. In this case, back in 2021, there was a load screen error where it just stuck on the load screen and wouldn't load. The fix for this, increasing the map count. A game like Hogwarts Legacy, I don't know if it's still happening, but around launch, uh, if you didn't increase the map count, it would crash maybe like 50 or so percent of the time when you go and fast travel or go through a loading screen. And there is a story element where you have to fast travel, so it basically soft locked the game. Another game is Counter-Strike 2. This one isn't specified why you should increase the value, but it's likely a load issue with all of the improved texturing and elements that are now in the game. And while not listed, other games are known to be affected. One being Star Citizen, which I don't know if you could really call a game, but either way, it's recommended you increase your max map count. Also games like A Hat in Time if you have way too many mods. It turns out that loading in too much stuff causes the game to go absolutely wild with the map count. Now these are just publicly known affected. I don't know what internal testing Valve has done, but I'm sure they've probably found other games that are also affected as well. So to make sure this just isn't a problem, let's just increase it to 2 billion because surely... Surely nothing is going to be a problem then. And if an application needs that much memory, you're going to notice the problem way before it gets the max map count. But on that weird off chance you do hit it, why set the value to the 32-bit integer limit minus 5? Well, this is actually explained in the kernel code documentation. This is referring to the default value, but the same logic applies here as well. When a program's core dump is generated as ELF format, a section is created per a VMA. In ELF, the number of sections is represented in unsigned short. This means the number of sections should be smaller than 65,535 at core dump. Because the kernel adds some informative sections to an image of program at generating core dump, we need some margin. The number of extra sections is 1 to 3 now, depends on the architecture. We use 5 as a safe margin here. This is how we get Fedora's number of 65,530. It's 65,535 minus the 5 of padding. But didn't the kernel documentation say it's 65,536? Yes, because the kernel documentation is wrong. It's been like this for a long time, and I guess since it hasn't really changed, nobody noticed it was wrong, nobody went and fixed it. Either way, the value is wrong, and it's not even the limit of an unsigned 16-bit integer. This is the number of distinct numbers in a 16-bit integer, because it's counting zero. The maximum limit of an unsigned 16-bit integer is 65,535, this value right here. But that doesn't answer why the kernel is still using the 16-bit integer range. The reason for that is ELF extended numbering allows more than 65,535 sections. So a 16-bit bound is not a hard limit anymore, 
although some user space tools can be surprised by that. From my experience, nothing has really happened, but when we are talking about the range of supported devices by the kernel and the range of supported software, it's very likely some random system out there is going to have a hard time dealing with that. But <laughs> if you're still using a modern kernel and you have some 16-bit tooling, I don't know what your situation is, but please tell me about it in the comment section. Now, for people like you and I and other desktop Linux users, gaming is probably the most relevant context. Most other software just isn't affected by changing the map count. But it does have some implications in the businessy side as well. One tool being Elasticsearch. This is a big data tool. I'm not explaining big data here. Basically, it's just what the name sounds like. You're dealing with a lot of data. And when you're dealing with a lot of data, you're going to have a lot of map areas. So it's very recommended. You have at least 262,144. I don't know where they came up with that specific number from, but it's very recommended you use at least that. Now, this is my absolute favorite part of the proposal, the feedback section. This was briefly discussed in Fedora Devel and received positively. Concerns over possible downsides were raised, but I'm not aware of any, but more input here is desired. So there were people concerned. Maybe there are going to be some bad things about doing this, but they didn't have any reason for saying so. They were just concerned. So with that being the case, it's probably going to happen on Fedora 39. But if you want to go and change it before that, you want to go and change it on any other distro, all you need to do is run this simple command, sudo sysctl-w vm.maxmapcount equals whatever value you want to set it to. This is going to set it temporarily. If you want to set it more permanently, what you can do is go in to slash etsy slash sysctl.d, make a file in here like 90-override.conf, and then set everything you want to set. And then when you reboot your system, it'll always be set. Do a bit of testing, see if you find any regressions, you probably won't, and then never remember you actually change the value. When you run across someone having issues with this, you're going to be like, wait, this problem doesn't exist. I don't know why, because you didn't remember ever changing the value. I really hope other distros just do this. There is no reason on a regular desktop system to have 65,530. Maybe in some weird embedded context there is, totally fair. But all of the mainstream distros should just do this, unless someone can think of a reason not to. But I certainly can't. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have you ever changed this value? Have you ever run into a map count issue? Do you have an issue you didn't realize what the problem was, but now changing this value has made the problem go away? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go and like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrubs, the Libera Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... I don't care about the hate. I love the new outro.